The Consolidated B-24 Liberator is an American heavy bomber, designed by Consolidated Aircraft of San Diego, California. It was known within the company as the Model 32, and some initial production aircraft were laid down as export models designated as various LB-30s, in the land bomber design category. At its inception, the B-24 was a modern design featuring a highly efficient shoulder-mounted, high-aspect ratio Davis wing. The wing gave the Liberator a high cruise speed, long range and the ability to carry a heavy bomb load. Early RAF Liberators were the first aircraft to cross the Atlantic Ocean as a matter of routine. In comparison with its contemporaries, the B-24 was relatively difficult to fly and had poor low-speed performance, it also had a lower ceiling and was less robust than the Boeing B-17 Flying Fortress. While aircrews tended to prefer the B-17, general staff favored the B-24 and procured it in huge numbers for a wide variety of roles. At approximately 18,500 units, including over 4,600 manufactured by Ford Motor Company, it holds records as the world's most produced bomber, heavy bomber, multi-engine aircraft, and American military aircraft in history. The B-24 was used extensively in World War II. It served in every branch of the American armed forces as well as several Allied air forces and navies. It saw use in every theater of operations. Along with the B-17, the B-24 was the mainstay of the U.S. strategic bombing campaign in the Western European theater. Due to its range, it proved useful in bombing operations in the Pacific, including the bombing of Japan. Long-range anti-submarine liberators played an instrumental role in closing the Mid-Atlantic Gap in the Battle of the Atlantic. The C-87 transport derivative served as a longer-range, higher-capacity counterpart to the Douglas C-47 Skytrain. By the end of World War II, the technological breakthroughs of the Boeing B-29 Superfortress and other modern types had surpassed the bombers that served from the start of the war. The B-24 was rapidly phased out of U.S. service, although the PB-4Y-2 privateer maritime patrol derivative carried on in service with the U.S. Navy in the Korean War. Topic. Design and development Topic. Initial specifications The Liberator originated from a United States Army Air Corps USAAC request in 1938 for Consolidated to produce the B-17 under license. After company executives including President Reuben Fleet visited the Boeing factory in Seattle, Washington, Consolidated decided instead to submit a more modern design of its own, the new Model 32 combined designer David R. Davis's wing, a high-efficiency airfoil design created by unorthodox means, with the twin-tail design from the Consolidated Model 31 flying boat, together on a new fuselage. This new fuselage was intentionally designed around twin bomb bays, each one being the same size and capacity of the B-17 bomb bays. In January 1939, the USAAC, under specification C-212, formally invited Consolidated to submit a design study for a bomber with longer range, higher speed and greater ceiling than the B-17. The specification was written such that the Model 32 would automatically be the winning design. The program was run under the umbrella group, Project A, an Air Corps requirement for an intercontinental bomber that had been conceived in the mid-1930s. Although the B-24 did not meet Project A goals, it was a step in that direction. Project A led to the development of the Boeing B-29 and Consolidated's own B-32 and B-36. Topic. Design The B-24 had a shoulder-mounted high-aspect ratio Davis wing. This wing was highly efficient allowing a relatively high airspeed and long range. Compared to the B-17 it had a 6-foot larger wingspan, but a lower wing area. This gave the B-24 a 35% higher wing loading. 
The relatively thick wing held the promise of increased tankage while delivering increased lift and speed, but became unpleasant to fly when committed to heavier loadings as experienced at high altitude and in bad weather. The Davis wing was also more susceptible to ice formation than contemporary designs, causing distortions of the aerofoil section and resulting in the loss of lift unpleasant experiences drawing such comments as the Davis wing won't hold enough ice to chill your drink. The wing was also more susceptible to damage than the B-17's wing, making the aircraft less able to absorb battle damage. The wing carried four supercharged radial engines mounted in cowlings borrowed from the PBY Catalina except being oval in cross-section, with oil coolers mounted on each side of the engine, turning three-bladed variable pitch propellers. The tail plane featured two large oval vertical stabilizers mounted at the ends of a rectangular horizontal stabilizer. As early as 1942, it was recognized that the Liberator's handling and stability could be improved by the use of a single vertical fin. The single fin was tested by Ford on the single B24ST and an experimental XB24K, and was found to improve handling. All Liberators were produced with twin oval fins, with the exception of eight pre-production B24N aircraft. The B-24N was intended as a major production variant featuring a single tail. Over 5,000 orders for this version were placed in 1945, but were cancelled due to the end of the war. The single fin did appear in production on the PB-4Y privateer derivative, the B-25's spacious, slab-sided fuselage which earned the aircraft the nickname, Flying Boxcar was built around two central bomb bays that could accommodate up to 8,000 pounds 3,600 kilograms of ordnance in each compartment, but rarely did, as this decreased range and altitude. The forward and aft bomb bay compartments were further split longitudinally with a centerline ventral catwalk just 9 inches 23 centimeters wide, which also functioned as the fuselage's structural keel beam. An unusual four-panel set of all-metal, tambour panel roller type bomb bay doors which operated very much like the movable enclosure of a roll top desk retracted into the fuselage creating a minimum of aerodynamic drag to keep speed high over the target area and also allowed the bomb bays to be opened while on the ground the low ground clearance prevented the use of normal bomb bay doors the occasional need for crewmen to move around inside from fore to aft within the B-25's fuselage during a mission over the narrow catwalk was a drawback shared with other designs. The Liberator carried a crew of up to ten. The pilot and co-pilot sat alongside each other in a well-glazed cockpit. The navigator and bombardier, who could also double as a nose or wiggly ear gunner, guns mounted in the sides of the aircraft nose, sat in the nose, fronted on the pre-B24H models with a well-framed greenhouse nose with some two dozen glazed panels in total, with two flexible ball mounts built into it for forward defensive firepower using .30 caliber Browning M1919 machine guns. Later versions were fitted with a powered twin .50 caliber .7 mm M2 Browning machine gun nose turret. The radio – radar operator sat behind the pilots, facing sideways and sometimes doubled as a waist gunner. The upper gun turret, when fitted, was located just behind the cockpit, in front of the wing, and was operated by the flight engineer, who sat adjacent to the radio operator behind the pilots. In the tail, up to four crew could be located in the waist, operating waist guns, a retractable lower ball turret and a tail gun turret matching the nose turret. The waist gun hatches were provided with doors, with the ball turret required to be retractable for ground clearance when preparing to land, as well as for greater aerodynamic efficiency. The tail gunner's powered twin gun turret was located at the end of the tail, behind the tailplane. The B-24 featured a tricycle undercarriage, the first American bomber to do so, with the main gear extending out of the wing on long, single oleo strut legs. It used differential braking and differential thrust for ground steering, which made taxiing difficult. Topic. Armament 
The defensive armament of the B-24 varied from transport variants, which were usually unarmed, to bombers armed with up to 10.50 caliber mm M2 Browning machine guns located in turrets and waste gun positions. Early model Liberators were fitted with a top-mounted turret, a tail turret and single machine guns located in the waist and in the glazed nose. The B-24D initially featured upper, belly and tail turrets, plus swiveling single guns in the waist and on either side of the nose. The belly turret was a periscopically sighted Bendix model. The turret proved unsatisfactory and was soon replaced by a tunnel gun, which was itself omitted. Later D models were fitted with the retractable Sperry ball turret. The B-24H saw the replacement of the glazed greenhouse nose with a nose turret, which reduced the B-24's vulnerability to head-on attacks. The bomb site was located below the turret. Long-range naval patrol versions often carried a light defensive armament. Being on long-distance patrols, they generally flew outside the range of enemy fighters. Also, the necessity of range increased the importance of weight and aerodynamic efficiency. Thus naval patrol often omitted top, belly and nose turrets. Some were fitted with belly pack containing fixed, forward-facing cannon. Topic prototypes and service evaluation The U.S. Army Air Corps awarded a contract for the prototype XB-24 in March 1939, with the requirement that one example should be ready before the end of the year. Consolidated finished the prototype and had it ready for its first flight two days before the end of 1939. The design was simple in concept but, nevertheless, advanced for its time. Consolidated incorporated innovative features such as a tricycle landing gear and Davis wing. Compared to the B-17, the proposed Model 32 had a shorter fuselage and 25% less wing area, but had a 6 feet meters greater wingspan and a substantially larger carrying capacity, as well as a distinctive twin tail. Whereas the B-17 used nine-cylinder Wright R1820 Cyclone engines, the consolidated design used twin-row, 14-cylinder Pratt & Whitney R1830 twin WASP radials of 1,000 horsepower 750 kilowatts. The maximum takeoff weight was one of the highest of the period. The new design would be the first American heavy bomber in production to use tricycle landing gear. The North American B-25 Mitchell medium bomber's predecessor, the NA-40 introduced this feature in January 1939 with the consolidated Model 32 having long, thin wings with the efficient Davis high aspect ratio design also used on the projected Model 31 twin-engined commercial flying boat promising to provide maximum fuel efficiency. Wind tunnel testing and experimental programs using an existing consolidated Model 31 provided extensive data on the flight characteristics of the Davis airfoil. Early orders, placed before the XB-24 had flown, included 36 for the USAAC, 120 for the French Air Force and 164 for the Royal Air Force RAF. The name Liberator was originally given to it by the RAF, and subsequently adopted by the USAAF as the official name for the Model 24. When France fell in 1940, their aircraft were redirected to the RAF. One outcome of the British and French purchasing commissions was a backlog of orders amounting to $680 million, of which $400 million was foreign orders. U.S. official statistics indicating tooling, plant, and expansion advanced the previously anticipated volume of U.S. aircraft production by up to a year. A consequence of the British orders went beyond requests for specific modifications, as the RAF accepted some designs while rejecting others, American production was, to some extent, redirected along specific lines that accorded with British doctrine, the B-25's capacious bomb bay and ability to carry 8,000 pounds ordnance a case in point, after initial testing, the XB-24 was found to be deficient in several areas. One major failure of the prototype was that it failed to meet the top speed requirements specified in the contract. As built, the XB-24 top speed was only 273 miles per hour instead of the specified 311 miles per hour. As a result, the mechanically supercharged Pratt & Whitney R1830-33s were replaced with the turbo-supercharged R1830s. 
Additionally, the tail span was widened by 2 feet meters and the pitot static probes were relocated from the wings to the fuselage. The XB-24 was then re-designated XB-24B. These changes became standard on all B-24s built starting with the B-24C model. In April 1939, the USAAC initially ordered 7YB-24 under CAC contract number 12464. The U.S. policy at the time, despite neutrality, was that American requirements could be deferred while the its allies could immediately put U.S. production into the war effort. The added advantage was the American types could be assessed in the Europe war zone earlier. Thus the first six YB-24 were released for direct purchase under CAC contract hashtag F-677 on 9 November 1940. These aircraft were redesignated LB-30A. The seventh aircraft was used by Consolidated and the USAAC to test armor installations as well as self-sealing fuel tanks. Initially, these aircraft were to be given USAAC serials 39-681-39-687. Due to deferments of the U.S. requirements, the U.S. purchase was twice postponed, and the serial numbers were changed to 40-696-40-702. When the RAF purchased the first six YB-24 aircraft, the serial numbers were reassigned to an early batch of B-24D funded by the deferment. Topic. Operational history Topic. RAF The first British liberators had been ordered by the Anglo-French Purchasing Board in 1940. After the fall of France the French orders were in most cases transferred to Britain. The RAF found, as did the U.S., that global war increased the need for air transports and early type bombers and seaplanes were converted or completed as cargo carriers and transports. LB-30 as were assigned to transatlantic flights by RAF Ferry Command, between Canada and Prestwick, Scotland. The first liberators in British service were ex-USAAF YB-24s converted to Liberator GR as USAAF designation, LB-30A. The aircraft were all modified for logistic use in Montreal. Changes included the removal of all armament, provision for passenger seating, a revised cabin oxygen and heating system. Ferry Command's Atlantic Return Ferry Service flew civilian ferry pilots, who had delivered aircraft to the UK, back to North America, the most important role, however, for the first batch of the Liberator GR as was in service with RAF Coastal Command on anti-submarine patrols in the Battle of the Atlantic. Later in 1941, the first Liberators entered RAF service. This model introduced self-sealing fuel tanks, a 2 feet 7 in 79 centimeters plug in the forward fuselage to create more space for crew members and, more vitally, ever more equipment such as ASV Mark II radar anticipated early in the Liberator's development when Reuben Fleet told the engineering team he had a gut feeling the nose was too short. The Mark II was the first Liberator to be equipped with powered turrets, one plane having them installed before leaving San Diego, the remainder having them installed in the field, four Browning Balton Paul A-type MKIV with 600 rounds of .303 in the dorsal position, and a Balton Paul E-type MK2 with 2,200 rounds in the tail, later increased to 2,500 rounds, supplemented by pairs of guns at the waist position, a single gun in the nose and another in the the belly, for a total of 14 guns. The maximum takeoff weight was slightly raised to 64,250 pounds, the maximum altitude lifted from 21,200 to 24,000 feet but the maximum speed was reduced to 263 miles per hour, largely as a result of increased drag. The Liberator II, referred to as the LB-30A by the USAAF, were divided between Coastal Command, Bomber Command, and British Overseas Airways Corporation BOAC. Both BOAC and the RAF used converted Liberator IIs as unarmed long-range cargo carriers. These aircraft flew between Britain and Egypt, with an extensive detour around Spain over the Atlantic, and they were used in the evacuation of Java in the East Indies. 
BOAC also flew transatlantic services and other various long-range air transportation routes. Two RAF bomber squadrons with Liberators were deployed to the Middle East in early 1942. While RAF Bomber Command did not use B-24s as strategic bombers over mainland Northwest Europe, No. 223 Squadron RAF, one of Bomber Command's 100 Bomber Support Group squadrons, used 20 Liberator VIS to carry electronic jamming equipment to counter German radar. In October 1944, two RAF Liberator Squadrons 357 and 358 were deployed to Jessore India in support of British SAS, American OSS and French CIS underground operations throughout SE Asia. The aircraft were stripped of most armaments to allow for fuel for up to 26-hour return flights such as Jessore to Singapore. Liberators were also used as anti-submarine patrol aircraft by RAF Coastal Command. RAF Liberators were also operated as bombers from India by SEAC and would have been a part of Tiger Force if the war had continued. Many of the surviving Liberators originated in this command. <laughs> Anti-submarine and maritime patrols The Liberators made a significant contribution to Allied victory in the Battle of the Atlantic against German U-boats. Aircraft had the ability to undertake surprise air attacks against surfaced submarines. Liberators assigned to the RAF's Coastal Command in 1941, offensively to patrol against submarines in the eastern Atlantic Ocean, produced immediate results. The introduction of very long-range VLR liberators vastly increased the reach of Britain's maritime reconnaissance force, closing the mid-Atlantic gap where a lack of air cover had allowed U-boats to operate without risk of aerial attack. For 12 months, No. 120 Squadron RAF of Coastal Command with its handful of worn and modified early model liberators supplied the only air cover for convoys in the Atlantic gap, the liberator being the only aeroplane with sufficient range. The VLR Liberators sacrificed some armor and often gun turrets to save weight, while carrying extra aviation gasoline in their bomb bay tanks. Liberators were equipped with ASVMK-2 radar, which together with the Lee Light, gave them the ability to hunt U-boats by day and by night. Before the Lee Light not a single enemy submarine had been sunk in over five months, but in combination with radar it was so overwhelmingly effective that many German submarine crews chose to surface during the day so that they could at least see the aircraft attacking them and have a chance to fire their anti-aircraft weaponry in defence. These liberators operated from both sides of the Atlantic with the Royal Canadian Air Force and the Army Air Force's Anti-Submarine Command and later, the US Navy conducting patrols along all three American American coasts and the Canal Zone. The RAF and later American patrols ranged from the east, based in Northern Ireland, Scotland, Iceland and beginning in mid-1943 from the Azores. This role was dangerous, especially after many U-boats were armed with extra anti-aircraft guns, some adopting the policy of staying on the surface to fight, rather than submerging and risking being sunk by aerial weapons such as rockets, gunfire, torpedoes and depth charges from the bombers. American Liberators flew from Nova Scotia, Greenland, the Azores, Bermuda, the Bahamas, Puerto Rico, Cuba, Panama, Trinidad, Ascension Island and from wherever else they could fly far out over the Atlantic. The rather sudden and decisive turning of the Battle of the Atlantic in favor of the Allies in May 1943 was the result of many factors. The gradual arrival of many more VLR and in October, PB-4Y novelized liberators for anti-submarine missions over the mid-Atlantic gap, Black Pit, and the Bay of Biscay was an important contribution to the Allies' greater success. Liberators were credited in full or in part with sinking 93 U-boats. The B-24 was vital for missions of a radius less than 1,000 miles 1,600 kilometers, in both the Atlantic and Pacific theaters where U.S. Navy PB-4Y-1s and USAAF SB-24s took a heavy toll of enemy submarines and surface combatants and shipping. Topic. USAAF. Topic. Introduction to service, 
The United States Army Air Forces USAAF took delivery of its first B-24s in mid-1941. Over the next three years, B-24 squadrons deployed to all theaters of the war, African, European, China-Burma-India, the Antisubmarine Campaign, the Southwest Pacific Theater and the Pacific Theater. In the Pacific, to simplify logistics and to take advantage of its longer range, the B-24 and its twin, the U.S. Navy PB-4Y was the chosen standard heavy bomber. By mid-1943, the shorter range B-17 was phased out. The Liberators which had served early in the war in the Pacific continued the efforts from the Philippines, Australia, Espiritu Santo, Guadalcanal, Hawaii, and Midway Island. The Liberator peak overseas deployment was 45.5 bomb groups in June 1944. Additionally, the Liberator equipped a number of independent squadrons in a variety of special combat roles. The cargo versions, C-87 and C-109 tanker, further increased its overseas presence, especially in Asia in support of the XX Bomber Command Air Offensive against Japan. So vital was the need for long-range operations, that at first USAAF used the type as transports. The Seoul B-24 in Hawaii was destroyed by the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor on 7 December 1941. It had been sent to the Central Pacific for a very long-range reconnaissance mission that was preempted by the Japanese attack. The first USAAF liberators to carry out combat missions were 12 repossessed LB-30s deployed to Java with the 11th Bombardment Squadron 7th Bombardment Group that flew their first combat mission in mid-January. Two were shot up by Japanese fighters, but both managed to land safely. One was written off due to battle damage and the other crash landed on a beach. U.S.-based B-24s entered combat service in 1942 when on 6 June, four B-24s from Hawaii staging through Midway Island attempted an attack on Wake Island, but were unable to find it. The B-24 came to dominate the heavy bombardment role in the Pacific because compared to the B-17, the B-24 was faster, had longer range, and could carry a ton more bombs. Topic. Strategic bombing, 1942–1945 On 12 June 1942, 13 B-24s of the Halverson Project HALPRO, flying from Egypt attacked the Axis-controlled oil fields and refineries around Ploiesti, Romania. Within weeks, the first provisional bombardment group formed from the remnants of the Halverson and China detachments. This unit then was formalized as the 376th Bombardment Group, Heavy, and along with the 98th BG formed the nucleus of the IX Bomber Command of the 9th Air Force, operating from Africa until absorbed into the 12th Air Force briefly, and then the 15th Air Force, operating from Italy. The 9th Air Force moved to England in late 1943. This was a major component of the USSTAF and took a major role in strategic bombing. 15 of the 15th AF's 21 bombardment groups flew B-24s. For much of 1944, the B-24 was the predominant U.S. Strategic Air Forces USSTAF, formerly the 8th Air Force in the combined bomber offensive against Germany, forming nearly half of its heavy bomber strength in the ETO prior to August and most of the Italian-based force. Thousands of B-24s flying from bases in Europe dropped hundreds of thousands of tons of high explosive and incendiary bombs on German military and industrial targets. The 44th Bombardment Group was one of the first two heavy bombardment groups flying the B-24 with the 8th Air Force in the fall, winter air campaigns in the European Theater of Operations. The 44th Bomb Group flew the first of its 344 combat missions against the Axis powers in World War II on 7 November 1942. The first B-24 loss over German territory occurred on 26 February 1943. Earlier in the war, both the Luftwaffe and the Royal Air Force had abandoned daylight bombing raids because neither could sustain the losses suffered. The Americans persisted, however, at great cost in men and aircraft. 
In the period between the 7th of November 1942 and the 8th of March 1943, the 44th Bomb Group lost 13 of its original 27 B24s. For some time, newspapers had been requesting permission for a reporter to go on one of the missions. Robert B. Post and five other reporters of the New York Times were granted permission. Post was the only reporter assigned to a B-24 equipped group, the 44th Bomb Group. He flew in B-24-41-23777, Maisie, on mission number 37 to Bremen, Germany. Intercepted just short of the target, the B-24 came under attack from JG-1's Messerschmitt Bf-109's, Lieutenant Heinz Noak, who finished the war with 31 kills, shot down the Liberator. Post and all but two of the 11 men aboard were killed. Noak reported, The fire spread out along the right wing. The inboard propeller windmilled to a stop. And then, suddenly, the whole wing broke off. At an altitude of 900 meters there was a tremendous explosion. The bomber had disintegrated. The blazing wreckage landed just outside Bad Zwischenan airfield. A total of 177 B-24s carried out the famous second attack on Ploiesti Operation Tidal Wave on 1 August 1943. This was the B-24's most costly mission. In late June 1943, the three B-24 Liberator groups of the 8th Air Force were sent to North Africa on temporary duty with the 9th Air Force, the 44th Bomb Group joined the 93rd and the 389th Bomb Groups. These three units then joined the two 9th Air Force B-24 Liberator groups for low-level attack on the German-held Romanian oil complex at Ploiesti. This daring assault by high-altitude bombers at tree-top level was a costly success. The attack became disorganized after a navigational error which alerted the defenders and protracted the bomb run from the initial point. The 44th destroyed both of its assigned targets, but lost 11 of its 37 bombers and their crews. Colonel Leon W. Johnson, the 44th's commander, was awarded the Medal of Honor for his leadership, as was Col. John Riley. Killer. Kane, commander of the 98th Bomb Group. Kane and Johnson survived the mission but three other recipients of the Medal of Honor for their actions in the mission. Lieutenant. Lloyd H. Hughes, Major John L. Yerstad and Colonel Addison E. Baker were killed in action. For its actions on the Ploiesti mission, the 44th was awarded its second Distinguished Unit Citation. Of the 177 B-24s that were dispatched on this operation, 54 were lost. Topic. Radar, electronic warfare and PGM deployment The B-24 advanced the use of electronic warfare and equipped search bomber SB, low altitude lab and radar countermeasure RCM squadrons in addition to high altitude bombing. Among the specialized squadrons were the 20th RS RCM, 36th BS RCM, 406th NLS, 63rd BS SB, Seahawks, 373 RDBS lab and 868th BS SB snoopers. The 36th Bombardment Squadron was the 8th Air Force's only electronic warfare squadron using specially equipped B-24s to jam German VHF communications during large 8th Air Force daylight raids. In addition, the 36th BS flew night missions with the Royal Air Force Bomber Command 100 Group at RAF Skullthorpe. Radar Countermeasures RCM, was code-named Carpet, however, this should not be confused with agent and supply drops, code-named carpetbaggers. The B-24 was the platform for the pioneering use of the American Zazan Laterally Guidable Precision Guided Munition Ordnance Design, a pioneering Allied radio-guided munition system during World War II. The ordnance of 1,000 pounds weight, was deployed operationally by USAAF B-24s in both Europe and the CBI theaters. The 8th Air Force's 458th Bombardment Group deployed the guided Azan Ordnance in Europe between June and September 1944, while the 10th Air Force's 493rd Bomb Squadron employed it against Japanese railroad bridges on the Burma Railway in early 1945, fulfilling the intended original purpose of the Azan system.
Topic: <inaudible> Assembly ships. In February 1944, the Second Division authorized the use of assembly ships or formation ships, specially fitted to aid assembly of individual group formations. They were equipped with signal lighting, provision for quantity discharge of pyrotechnics, and were painted with distinctive group-specific high-contrast patterns of stripes, checkers or polka dots to enable easy recognition by their flock of bombers. The aircraft used in the first allocation were B-24Ds retired by the 44th, 93rd and 389th groups. Arrangements for signal lighting varied from group to group, but generally consisted of white flashing lamps on both sides of the fuselage arranged to form the identification letter of the group. All armament and armor was removed and in some cases the tail turret. In the B-24Hs used for this purpose, the nose turret was removed and replaced by a carpetbagger type nose. Following incidents when flare guns were accidentally discharged inside the rear fuselage, some assembly formation ships had pyrotechnic guns fixed through the fuselage sides. As these aircraft normally returned to base once a formation had been established, a skeleton crew of two pilots, navigator, radio operator and one or two flare discharge operators were carried. In some groups an observer officer flew in the tail position to monitor the formation. These aircraft became known as Judas Goats. Topic. Carpetbaggers. From August 1943 until the end of the war in Europe, specially modified B-24Ds were used in classified missions. In a joint venture between the Army Air Forces and the Office of Strategic Services OSS, code named Operation Carpetbagger, pilots and crews flew specially modified B-24Ds painted with a glossy black anti-searchlight paint to supply friendly underground forces throughout German-occupied Europe. They also flew C-47s, Douglas A-26 Invaders, and British de Havilland Mosquitoes. Carpetbagger aircraft flew spies called Joes and commando groups prior to the Allied invasion of Europe on D-Day and afterward, and retrieved over 5,000 officers and enlisted men who had escaped capture after being shot down. The low-altitude, nighttime operation was extremely dangerous and took its toll on these airmen. The first aircrews chosen for this operation came from the anti-submarine bomb groups because of their special training in low-altitude flying and pinpoint navigation skills. Because of their special skills, they were called upon to fly fuel to General George Patton's army during the summer and early autumn of 1944 when it outran its fuel supply. When this mission was completed, it was recorded that 822,791 U.S. gallons of 80-octane gasoline had been delivered to three different airfields in France and Belgium. The 859 BS was converted from day bombardment to these operations and then transferred to the 15th Air Force. Topic. Transport variants Topic. C-87 Liberator Express In early 1942, with the need for a purpose-built transport with better high-altitude performance and longer range than the Douglas C-47 Skytrain, the San Diego plant began sending B-24D models to Fort Worth for conversion into the C-87 transport. The conversion had a hinged cargo door at the nose eliminating transparent nose and large cargo doors installed in the waist area. The C-87 had a large cargo floor, less powerful supercharged engines, no gun turrets, a floor in the bomb bay for freight, and some side windows. The navigator's position was relocated behind the pilot. Indigenous Fort Worth C-87 and at 22 production began with the FY 1943 order for 80 serial numbered airframes 43-30548 through 43-30627. The C-87A was a dedicated VIP series built in small quantity. 
Early versions were fitted with a single .50 caliber .7 mm Browning machine gun in their tails, and a XC87B version proposed 2.50 caliber .7 mm fixed machine guns for the nose, operable by the pilot, though these were eventually removed. The XC87B also designated a resurrected crash victim B24D42-40355 fitted with low altitude power packages and a forward fuselage extension. The extended nose earned it the name Pinocchio. Later modifications gave it a single tail and yet another type of engine packages bring it to near C87C configuration. Other C-87 designations were the U.S. Navy designation RAI and Lend-Lease Liberator Cargo 7. Although only 287 C-87 and 8 U.S. Navy RAI variants were produced, they were still important in the Army Air Force's airlift operations early in the war when aircraft with high altitude, long-range heavy hauling abilities were in short supply. The C-87 flew in many theaters of war, including much hazardous duty in flights from Labrador to Greenland and Iceland in the North Atlantic. In the China-Burma-India Theater CBI, the C-87 was used to airlift cargo and fuel over the hump the Himalayas, from India to China. Early in the campaign, the C-87 was the only readily available American transport that could fly over the Himalayas while heavily loaded, rather than relying on circuitous and highly dangerous routes through valleys and mountain passes, but the type was not very popular with crews, they complained of various hazards including the fuel system, engines and cockpit accessories, while the type was notorious for leaking fuel tanks and mid-air fires a constant danger. The C-87 also shared the Liberator's dangerous sensitivity to icing, particularly prevalent over Himalayan routes. With these difficulties in mind it is little wonder the ATC India China Division was the only unit in the command to be combat decorated during World War II, having been awarded a distinguished unit citation. The C-87 was not always popular with the aircrews assigned to fly it. The aircraft had the distressing habit of losing all cockpit electrical power on takeoff or at landings, its engine power and reliability with the less powerful superchargers also often left much to be desired. It proved to be quite vulnerable to icing conditions, and was prone to fall into a spin with even small amounts of ice accumulated onto its Davis wing. Since the aircraft had been designed to be a bomber that dropped its loads while airborne, the C-87's nose landing gear was not designed for landing with a heavy load, and frequently it collapsed from the stress. Fuel leaks inside the crew compartment from the hastily modified long-range fuel system were an all-too-common occurrence. Lastly, unlike a typical purpose-designed transport, the B-24 was not designed to tolerate large loading variations because most of its load was held on fixed bomb racks. Consequently, it was relatively easy for a poorly trained ground crew to load a C-87 with its center of gravity too far forward or aft, rendering the aircraft difficult to control due to inadequate or excessive longitudinal stability. In his autobiography, Fate as the Hunter, the writer Ernest K. Gann reported that, while flying air cargo in India, he barely avoided crashing an improperly loaded C-87 into the Taj Mahal. As soon as more dependable Douglas C-54 Skymaster and Curtis Wright C-46 commando transports became available in large numbers, C-87s were rapidly phased out of combat zone service, with some later used as VIP transports or B-24 flight crew trainers. Topic. C-109 version The C-109 was a dedicated fuel transport version of the B-24 conceived as a support aircraft for Boeing B-29 Superfortress operations in central China. Unlike the C-87, the C-109 was not built on the assembly line, but rather was converted from existing B-24 bomber production. To save weight, the glass nose, armament, turret fairings and bombardment equipment were removed. Several storage tanks were added, allowing a C-109 to carry 2,900 gallons L of fuel weighing over 22,000 pounds 10,000 kilograms. 
Plans originally called for 2,000 C-109s to support 10 groups of B-29s approximately 400 in China, but the capture of the Mariana Islands provided a far more easily resupplied location for raids on mainland Japan, and the plans were greatly scaled back. Only 218 C-109s were actually converted. After the transfer of the B-29s, the C-109s were reassigned to the Air Transport Command. According to the history of the U.S. Army Air Forces in World War II, at least one squadron was assigned to the X Troop Carrier Command in Europe to transport gasoline to advancing ground and air forces on the continent after the Normandy invasion. However, whereas a combat-loaded B-24 could safely take off with room to spare from a 6,000 feet 1, meters runway, a loaded C-109 required every foot of such a runway to break ground, and crashes on takeoff were not uncommon. The aircraft demonstrated unstable flight characteristics with all storage tanks filled, and proved very difficult to land fully loaded at airfields above 6,000 feet 1, meters MSL in elevation, such as those around Chengdu. After it was discovered that these problems could be alleviated by flying with the forward storage tank empty, this practice became fairly routine, enhancing aircrew safety at the cost of some fuel-carrying capacity. Many C-109s were lost in flying the hump airlift to China. The singing cowboy Jean Autry served in the Air Transport Command in the same squadron as Barry Goldwater, and described flying the C-109 over the hump as the thrill that lasts a lifetime. B-24 bombers were also extensively used in the Pacific area after the end of World War II to transport cargo and supplies during the rebuilding of Japan, China, and the Philippines. U.S. <laughs> <laughs> Navy and U.S. Marine Corps PB-4Y-1 <laughs> 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 B-24s were also used by the U.S. Navy and U.S. Marine Corps for ASW, anti-ship patrol, and photographic reconnaissance in the Pacific Theater, and by the U.S. Coast Guard for patrol and SAR. Naval B-24s were redesignated PB-4Y-1, meaning the fourth patrol bomber design built by Consolidated Aircraft. Navy PB-4Y-1s assigned to Atlantic ASW and all Coast Guard PB-4Y-1s had the ventral turret replaced by a retractable radome. Also, most naval aircraft had an Urco ball turret installed in the nose position, replacing the glass nose and other styles of turret. The Consolidated Aircraft Company PB-4Y-2 Privateer was a World War II U.S. Navy patrol bomber that was derived directly from the B-24 Liberator. The U.S. Navy had been using B-24s with only minor modifications as the PB-4Y-1 Liberator, and along with maritime patrol B-24s used by RAF Coastal Command this type of patrol plane had been quite successful. A fully novelized design was seen as advantageous, and Consolidated Aircraft developed a purpose-built long-range patrol bomber in 1943, designated PB-4Y-2. The privateer had non-turbosupercharged engines for weight savings and optimal performance at low to medium patrol altitudes, and was visually distinguishable from the B-24 and PB-4Y-1 by its longer fuselage, single tall vertical stabilizer rather than a twin tail, two dorsal turrets, and teardrop-shaped waist gun blisters similar in appearance to those on Consolidated's own PBY Catalina. Topic Australia Topic RAAF Australian aircrew seconded to the Royal Air Force flew Liberators in all theatres of the war, including with RAF Coastal Command, in the Middle East, and with South East Asia Command, while some flew in South African Air Force squadrons. Liberators were introduced into service in the Royal Australian Air Force RAAF in 1944, after the American commander of the Far East Air Forces FEAF, General George C. Kenney, suggested that seven heavy bomber squadrons be raised to supplement the efforts of American Liberator squadrons. 
The USAAF transferred some aircraft to the RAAF, while the remainder would be delivered from the USA under Lend-Lease. Some RAAF aircrew were given operational experience in Liberators while attached to USAAF squadrons. Seven flying squadrons, an operational training unit, and two special duties flights were equipped with the aircraft by the end of World War II in August 1945. The RAAF Liberators saw service in the South West Pacific theater of World War II, flying mainly from bases in the Northern Territory, Queensland and Western Australia. Aircraft conducted bombing raids against Japanese positions, ships and strategic targets in New Guinea, Borneo and the Netherlands East Indies. In addition, the small number of Liberators operated by No. 200 flight played an important role in supporting covert operations conducted by the Allied Intelligence Bureau, and other Liberators were converted to VIP transports. A total of 287 B-24D, B-24J, B-24L and B-24M aircraft were supplied to the RAAF, of which 33 were lost in action or accidents, with more than 200 Australians killed. Following the Japanese surrender the RAAF's liberators participated in flying former prisoners of war and other personnel back to Australia. Liberators remained in service until 1948, when they were replaced by Avro Lincolns. Topic. Qantas In June 1944, Qantas Empire Airways began service with the first of two converted LB-30 Liberators on the Perth to Colombo route to augment consolidated PBY Catalinas that had been used since May 1943. The double sunrise route across the Indian Ocean was 3,513 miles 5,654 kilometers long, the longest non-stop airline route in the world at the time. The Liberators flew a shorter 3,077 miles 4,952 kilometers over water route from Learmonth to an airfield northeast of Colombo, but they could make the flight in 17 hours with a 5,500 pounds 2,500 kilograms payload, whereas the Catalinas required 27 hours and had to carry so much auxiliary fuel that their payload was limited to only 1,000 pounds 450 kilograms. The route was named Kangaroo Service and marked the first time that Qantas's now famous Kangaroo logo was used. Passengers received a certificate proclaiming them as members of the Order of the Longest Hop. The Liberators were later replaced by Avro Lancastrians. Topic: <laughs> SAAF Two squadrons of the South African Air Force SAAF also flew B-24s, 31 and 34 squadrons under No. 2 Wing SAAF based at Foggia, Italy. These two squadrons engaged in relief flights to Warsaw and Krakow in Poland to support the Polish uprising against Nazi occupation. Luftwaffe <laughs> use <laughs> 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 Three B-24s were captured and then operated by the German Secret Operations Unit KG-200, which also tested, evaluated and sometimes clandestinely operated captured enemy aircraft during World War II. One of these was captured at Venegono, Italy on 29 March 1944. It was used on penetration missions in RAF bomber streams at night in Luftwaffe markings. On a ferry flight from Hildesheim to Bavaria on 6 April 1945 it was shot down, by German anti-aircraft fire. Crashed B-24s were the source of the landing gear units for the strictly experimental Junkers Ju-287 V-1 first prototype jet bomber airframe in 1945. Soviet use. Only one B-24 was officially delivered to the USSR according to the Lend-Lease Agreements, stranded in Yakutsk while flying a government mission to the Soviet Union in November 1942. In addition, 73 Liberators of various models that had force landed on European airfields were recovered and 30 of them were repaired and used by the 45th BAD. Topic. 
Chinese use The B-24 bombers of the 308th Bombardment Group heavy joined the Chinese battlefield in March 1944 as the heavy bombers of the 14th Air Force to fight against the Japanese during the Second Sino-Japanese War WW2 in China. About 48 B-24 megaseconds were provided by the U.S. to the Chinese Nationalists Air Force after WW2 and were used during the Chinese Civil War. The PLOF had two B-24 megaseconds captured from the Chinese nationalists during the Chinese Civil War and operated until 1952. <laughs> Production Approximately 18,500 B-24s were produced across a number of versions, including over 4,600 manufactured by Ford. It holds records as the world's most produced bomber, heavy bomber, multi-engine aircraft, and American military aircraft in history. Production took place at five plants. At Ford's Ypsilanti, Michigan-based Willow Run Bomber plant alone, one B-24 was being produced every 59 minutes at its peak, a rate so large that production exceeded the military's ability to use the aircraft. Such were the production numbers it has been said that more aluminum, aircrew, and effort went into the B-24 than any other aircraft in history. Continued development work by Consolidated produced a handful of transitional B-24Cs with turbocharged instead of supercharged engines. The turbocharged engines led to the flattened oval nacellas that distinguished all subsequent Liberator models. The B-24D was the first mass-produced series. The B-24D was the Liberator III in British service. It entered U.S. service in early 1942. It had turbocharged engines and increased fuel capacity. Three more 0.50 caliber machine guns brought the defensive armament up to 10 machine guns. At 59,524 pounds, 27,000 kilograms, 29.76 short tons maximum takeoff weight, it was one of the heaviest aircraft in the world, comparable with the British heavies, with fully loaded weights of 30 short tons for and nearly identical to the Stirling, the 34 short ton Lancaster, and the 27 short ton Halifax. Production of B-24s increased at an astonishing rate throughout 1942 and 1943. Consolidated aircraft tripled the size of its plant in San Diego and built a large new plant outside Fort Worth, Texas in order to receive the massive amounts of knock-down kits that the Ford Motor Company shipped via truck from its Ypsilanti, Michigan facility. A new government plant was built in Tulsa, Oklahoma with Reconstruction Finance Corporation funds and leased to Douglas Aircraft for assembly of B-24s from Ford Parts. Douglas ultimately built a total of 962 of the D, E, H, and J models there. Bell Aircraft built the B-24 under license at a factory near Marietta, Georgia, just northwest of Atlanta, online by mid-1943. The new plant produced hundreds of B-24 Liberator bombers. The aircraft was also built at North American Plant B in the city of Grand Prairie, Texas having only starting production of the B-24G in 1943. None of these were minor operations, but they were dwarfed by Ford's vast new purpose-built factory constructed at Willow Run near Detroit, Michigan. According to the Willow Run Reference Book published 1 February 1945, Ford broke ground on Willow Run on 18 April 1941, with the first plane coming off the line on 10 September 1942. Willow Run had the largest assembly line in the world 3,500,000 square feet, 330,000 square meters. At its peak in 1944, the Willow Run plant produced 1 B-24 per hour and 650 B-24s per month. In mid-1944, the production of the B-24 was consolidated from several different companies including some in Texas to two large factories, the Consolidated Aircraft Company in San Diego and the Ford Motor Company's factory in Willow Run, near Detroit, Michigan, which had been specially designed to produce B-24s. By 1945, Ford made 70% of all B-24s in two nine-hour shifts. 
Pilots and crews slept on 1,300 cots at Willow Run waiting for their B-24s to roll off the assembly line. At Willow Run, Ford produced half of 18,000 total B-24s alone. Up into December 1944, Ford had also produced an additional 7,242 KD or knockdown kits that would be trucked to and assembled by Consolidated in Fort Worth and Douglas Aircraft in Tulsa. Each of the B-24 factories was identified with a production code suffix, Consolidated, San Diego, CO, Consolidated, Fort Worth, CF, Ford, Willow Run, FO, North American, NT, and Douglas, Tulsa, DT. In 1943, the model of Liberator considered by many the definitive version was introduced. The B-24H was 10 inches 25 centimeters longer, had a powered gun turret in the upper nose to reduce vulnerability to head-on attack, and was fitted with an improved bomb sight behind a simpler, three-panel glazed lower nose, autopilot, and fuel transfer system. Consolidated, Douglas and Ford all manufactured the B-24H, while North American made the slightly different B-24G. All five plants switched over to the almost identical B-24J in August 1943. The later B-24L and B-24M were lighter weight versions and differed mainly in defensive armament. As the war progressed, the complexity of servicing the Liberator continued to increase. The B-24 variants made by each company differed slightly, so repair depots had to stock many different parts to support various models. Fortunately, this problem was eased in the summer of 1944, when North American, Douglas and Consolidated Aircraft at Fort Worth stopped making B-24s, leaving only the Consolidated plant in San Diego and the Ford plant in Willow Run. In all, 18,482 B-24s were built by September 1945, 12,000 saw service with the USAAF, with a peak inventory in September 1944 of 6,043. The U.S. Navy received 977 PB-4Y-1s Liberators originally ordered by the USAAF and 739 PB-4Y-2 privateers, derived from the B-24. The Royal Air Force received about 2,100 B 24s equipping 46 bomber groups and 41 squadrons. The Royal Canadian Air Force, RCAF, 1,200 B 24 Js, and the Royal Australian Air Force, RAAF, 287 B 24 Js, B 24 Ls, and B 24 Ms. Liberators were the only heavy bomber flown by the RAAF in the Pacific. Topic. Variants and conversions Topic U.S. Army Air Forces Variants XB-24 Single Prototype Ordered by Army Air Corps on 30 March 1939. Powered by four Pratt & Whitney R-1830-33 Twin Wasps rated at 1,200 horsepower 890 kilowatts for takeoff and 1,000 horsepower 750 kilowatts at 14,500 feet 4,400 meters. Bomb load of eight 1,000 pounds 450 kilograms bombs, with defensive armament of 30.5 in 12.7 millimeters and 40.30 in 7.62 millimeters machine guns. First flew the 29th of December 1939. Later converted to XB-24B, YB-24, LB-30A pre-production prototypes six examples were sold to Great Britain directly as designated LB-30A. U.S. funds and serial numbers were deferred to the B-24D production. The 7th 40 to 702 remained in U.S. service as the sole YB-24 for service test. Total, 7 B-24 ordered on 27 April 1939, less than 30 days after the XB-24 was ordered and before its completion. A number of minor modifications were made, elimination of leading edge slots, addition of de-icing boots. Total, one conversion of YB-24, B-24A, LB-30B ordered in 1939, the B-24A was the first production model. Due to the need for long-range aircraft, the B-24A was ordered before any version of the B-24 flew. 
The main improvement over the XB24 was improved aerodynamics, which led to better performance. 9 as transports transferred to ferrying command. 2020 sold directly to Great Britain as LB30B. Deferred U.S. funds and serial numbers allocated to future B24D production. Total 20 LB30B, 9B24A, XB24B, a newly funded conversion of the XB24 after it failed to reach its projected top speed. The Pratt and Whitney R183033 radials rated at 1,000 horsepower, 750 kilowatts, it carried were replaced with R183041 turbo supercharged radials rated at 1,200 horsepower, 890 kilowatts, increasing its top speed by 37 miles per hour, 60 kilometers per hour. The engine cowlings were made elliptical to accommodate the addition of the turbo superchargers. The XB24B version also lacked the engine slots of the original. It was re-serial numbered. Total, one converted XB24, XB24B39-680 was converted into a luxury airliner for Conserway. The conversion included gutting the interior, cutting new windows and dividing the interior into compartments with individual and bench seating, and two-tier Pullman-style sleeping berths. It featured generous trim, possibly for soundproofing, an in-flight galley with refrigerator and hot plates in bare metal probably stainless steel with lighting and services for the main deck controlled by a panel over the main passenger door, but photographs of the conversion dated 19 April 1945 show no visible seat belts or other passenger safety arrangements. B24C new production funded from deferred funds after LB30A to Britain used the engine package prototyped in the XB24B and the new fuselage of the LB30. The tail air gunner position was improved by adding a hydraulically powered consolidated A6 turret with twin .50 caliber .7 mm machine guns, a Martin-powered dorsal turret was added to the forward fuselage. One number 84 converted to prototype the 3 in nose armament for the B24D. FY funds and serial numbers transferred from B24A. Total, 9 B24D first model produced on a large scale, ordered from 1940 to 1942, as a B24C with better engines R183043 supercharged engines. The D model was initially equipped with a remotely operated and periscopically sighted Bendix belly turret, as the first examples of the B-17E Flying Fortress and some early models of the B-25 Mitchell medium bomber had used, but this proved unsatisfactory in service and was discontinued after the 287th aircraft. Production aircraft reverted to the earlier manually operated tunnel mounting with a single .50 caliber .7 mm machine. The tunnel gun was eventually replaced by the Sperry Ball turret, which had also been adopted by the later B-17E fortresses, but made retractable for the Liberator when not in use as the ventral area of its fuselage was very close to the ground on landing. In late B-24D's cheek, guns mounted on either side of the forward nose, just behind the framed greenhouse nose glazing were added. Total, 2,696-2,381 consolidated, San Diego, 305 consolidated, Fort Worth, 10 Douglas, Tulsa, Oklahoma. B-24E A slight alteration of the B-24D built by Ford, using R183065 engines. Unlike the B-24D, the B-24E retained the tunnel gun in the belly. The USAAF used the B-24S primarily as training aircraft since this series and other technology as were the aircraft being produced by Consolidated, San Diego, CO. Ford also built sub-assemblies for Douglas and Convair Fort Worth. These sub-assemblies were identical to Ford-built B-24S, except that they used the same engines as the B-24D R183043 radials. These sub-assemblies were called KD knockdown ships and were trucked from Willow Run to the southwest for the final assembly, total, 801 XB-24F. A prototype made to test thermal de-icers instead of the standard inflatable rubber boots. Total, one converted B-24D B-24G. 
designation for B-24D aircraft built by North American Aviation pursuant to a 1942 contract. Equipped with Sperry Ball turret and 3.50 caliber mm machine guns in nose. Total, 25 B-24G-1 As B-24G but with a 6-nose turret. Most B-24G aircraft were delivered to the 15th Air Force in Italy. Total, 405 B-24H because of obvious vulnerability of the B-24 to head on attack with the earlier, 24-panel, greenhouse, nose glazing, the B-24H design incorporated an electrically powered Emerson A-15 nose turret above the bombardier's position, somewhat similar to where the Fraser Nash FN-5 nose turret on the Avro Lancaster was placed. Approximately 50 other airframe changes were made, including a redesigned bombardier compartment possessing a glazed three-panel bombsite window unit replacing the greenhouse nose design. The tail turret was given larger windows for better visibility and the Martin A3 dorsal turret received an enlarged high hat dome. The waist gunner positions were enclosed with plexiglass windows and laterally offset as the later B-17G's waist positions had been to reduce mutual interference between the two waist gunners during battle. Most H-model aircraft were built by Ford at the Willow Run factory. Total, 3,100 B-24J the B-24J was very similar to the B-24H, but shortages of the Emerson nose turret required use of a modified, hydraulically powered consolidated A-6 turret in most J-model aircraft built at consolidated San Diego and Fort Worth factories. The B-24J featured an improved autopilot, Type C-1, and a bombsite of the M-1 series. B-24H sub-assemblies made by Ford and constructed by other companies and any model with a C-1 or M-1 retrofit, were all designated B-24J. The J model was the only version to be built by all five factories involved in B-24 production. Total, 6,678 XB-24K Developed from the B-24ST, with the B-23 Dragon empennage replaced by the tail of a Douglas C-54 Skymaster. The improved performance and handling of the B-24ST and XB-24K led to the decision to incorporate a single tail in the PB-4Y2 and B-24N. Total, one converted B-24D, B-24L, because of the excessively high gross weight of the B-24J, the Army pushed for a lighter version. In the B-24L, the Sperry Ball turret was replaced by a floor ring mount with 2.50 caliber mm machine guns, and the A-6B tail turret by an M-6A. Later aircraft were delivered from the factory without tail armament. An A6B, M6A, or a manually operated twin .50 caliber .7 mm mounting was then installed at a depot before arrival at operational units. The L model was built only at Willow Run and Consolidated San Diego Factory. Total, 1,667 B24M An enhancement of the B24L with further weight-saving devices. The B-24M used a more lightweight version of the A-6B tail turret, the waist gunner positions were left open, and the retractable Sperry ventral ball turret was reintroduced. For better visibility from the flight deck, the windshield in Ford built aircraft was replaced by a version with less framing from Block 20 onward. The B-24M became the last production model of the B-24, a number of the B-24s built flew only the course between the factory and the scrap heap. Total, 2,593 XB-24N A redesign of the B-24J, made to accommodate a single tail. It also featured an Emerson 128 ball turret in the nose and a stationary tail gunner's position. While 5,168 B-24Ns were ordered, the end of the war resulted in cancellation of all contracts before production could begin. Its single tail was said to be the inspiration for the PB4Y2 privateer's similar single fin, rudder tail design. Total, 1 YB24N. Pre production service test version of the XB24N. Total, 7 XB24P. 
a modified B24D used by Sperry Gyroscope Company to test airborne fire control systems. Total: one converted B24D XB24Q. A general electric conversion of the B24L. Used to test a radar-controlled tail turret intended for use in the Boeing B-47 Stratajet. Total, one converted B-24L XB-41. Because there were no fighters capable of escorting bomber formations on deep strike missions early in World War II, the Army authorized tests for heavily armed bombers to act as gunship. Escorts for bombing missions, which inspired both the B-17-derived YB-40 Flying Fortress gunship and its Liberator-derived XB-41 counterpart. The XB-41 had 14.50 caliber machine guns, including a Bendix chin turret and a second Martin A-3 turret on the upper fuselage. A single aircraft was completed in 1942. Performance changed drastically with the addition of more turrets. The escorts were also unable to keep up with bomber formations once the bombs had been dropped. The results of 1943 testing were very negative and the project was quickly cancelled. Total, one converted B-24D B-24ST an experimental aircraft, the B-24ST for single tail, an unofficial designation applied by Ford was made by Ford by fitting a Douglas B-23 Dragon empennage onto a B-24D airframe. The aircraft was more stable and had better handling than other models. It was used as the basis of the XB-24K, at 22 or TB-24. C-87 used for flight engineer training. RB-24L, developed for training B-29 gunners on an identical remote gun system installed on a B-24L. TB-24L, as with the RB-24L, but with additional radar equipment. C-87 Liberator Express. Passenger transports with accommodation for 20 passengers. C-87A, VIP transports with R-183045 instead of minus 43 engines and sleep accommodations for 16 passengers. C-87B, projected armed transport variant with nose guns, dorsal turret, and ventral tunnel gun, never produced. C-87C, U.S. Army Air Force, Air Force designation for the RI-3, XC-109, C-109, Tankers with specialized equipment to help prevent explosions, used to ferry fuel from India to China to support initial B-29 raids against Japan, XF-7. Photographic reconnaissance variant developed from the B-24D, F-7. Photographic reconnaissance variant developed from the B-24H, FO block, F-7A. Photographic reconnaissance variant developed from the B-24J, three cameras in the nose and three in the bomb bay. F-7B Photographic reconnaissance variant developed from the B-24J, six cameras in the bomb bay, BQ-8. A number of worn-out B-24D and B-24Js were converted as radio-controlled flying bombs to attack German targets. Joseph P. Kennedy Jr. was killed in a BQ-8 during Operation Anvil. Topic. U.S. Navy nomenclature and sub-variants PB-4Y-1 U.S. Navy designation applied to 976 novelized B-24D, J, L and M models built at Consolidated San Diego Factory, as well as one North American built B-24G. Later aircraft were equipped with an Urco bow turret. PB-4Y-1P Photographic reconnaissance variant developed from the PB-4Y-1. PB-4Y-2 Privateer a developed PB-4Y with a large single fin and many other improvements and changes. P-5Y Proposed twin-engine patrol version of PB-4Y-1. Unbuilt. RI-1 U.S. Navy designation for the C-87A. RI-2 U.S. Navy designation for the C-87. RI-3 Transport variant of the PB-4Y2
R2Y Liberator liner built using a new fuselage for the U.S. Navy as an airliner with 48 seats. Topic. British Commonwealth nomenclature and sub-variants Liberator BMKI B24A, direct purchase aircraft for the RAF. Total, 20 considered unsuitable for combat, some rebuilt as the GR.1 and used in British anti-submarine patrol squadrons. Liberator BMK2 The first combat-ready B24. The modifications included a three-foot nose extension as well as a deeper aft fuselage and wider tailplane. There was no direct B-24 equivalent but similar to the B-24C, built to meet British specifications with British equipment and armament. A small series of BMKIIs were reconstructed as unarmed transports, designated the LB-30 with the USAAF. Total production, 165. Liberator BMK-3 B-24D variant with single .303 in 7.7 mm Browning machine gun in the nose, two in each waist position, and four in a Balton Paul tail turret. Similar to that on contemporary British heavy bombers such as the Halifax, as well as other British equipment. The Martin dorsal turret was retained. Total, 156. Liberator BMKIIIA, Lend Lease B-24Ds with American Equipment and Weapons, Liberator BMKIV Reserved for the B-24E, but there is no record of the RAF actually receiving any. Liberator BMKV B-24D modified for extra fuel capacity at the cost or armor, with the same armament fit as the Liberator MK-3 Liberator BMKV B-24Hs in RAF service fitted with Balton Paul tail turrets, but retaining the rest of their armament. Liberator BMK-8 RAF designation for B-24Js. Liberator GRMKV B-24D modified by RAF Coastal Command for the anti-submarine role with search radar and lee light. Some were fitted with eight zero-length rocket launchers, four on each wing. Liberator GRMKV B24G HJ type used as a long range general reconnaissance aircraft by RAF Coastal Command. Liberator GRMK8 B24J modified by RAF Coastal Command for the anti submarine role. Liberator CMKV Liberator BMK8 converted for use as a transport. Liberator CMK7 British designation for C-87. Liberator CMK-8. Liberator GMK-8, converted for use as a transport. Liberator CMKX. RAF designation for the RI-3, C-87 Clate in the war RAF Liberator aircraft modified in England for use in Southeast Asia had the suffix snake stenciled below the serial number to give them priority delivery through the Mediterranean and Middle East. Topic. Operators Topic. Surviving aircraft Topic Specifications B-24J, Data from Quest for Performance, Jane's Fighting Aircraft of World War II, General Dynamics Aircraft and their predecessors General Characteristics Crew, 11, Pilot, Copilot, Navigator, Bombardier, Radio Operator, Nose Turret, Top Turret, Two Waist Gunners, Ball Turret, Tail Gunner, Length, 67 feet 2 in 20.47 meters, Wingspan, 110 feet 34 meters, Height, 17 feet 7.5 in 5.372 meters wing area 1048 square feet 97.4 square meters aspect ratio 11.550 lift drag coefficient cd 0.0406 frontal area 42.54 square feet 3.952 square meters airfoil root davis 22% tip davis 9.3% empty weight 36500 pounds 16000 
2,556 kilograms gross weight, 55,000 pounds, 24,948 kilograms max takeoff weight, 65,000 pounds, 29,484 kilograms plus fuel capacity, 2,344 U.S. gal, 1,952 imp gal, 8,870 l normal capacity, 3,614 U.S. gal, 3,009 imp gal, 13,680 l with long-range tanks in the bomb bay, oil capacity 131.6 U.S. gal, 109.6 imp gal, 498 l in four self-sealing nacelle hopper tanks power plant, four times Pratt & Whitney R1830-35 Twin Wasp, R1830-41 or R1830-65 14-cylinder two-row air-cooled turbosupercharged radial piston engines, 1,200 horsepower, 890 kilowatts each propellers, three-bladed Hamilton Standard, 11 feet 7 in 3.53 meters diameter constant speed fully feathering propellers performance maximum speed, 297 miles per hour, 478 kilometers per hour, 258 kn at 25,000 feet, 7,600 meters cruise speed, 215 miles per hour, 346 kilometers per hour, 187 kn stall speed, 95 miles per hour, 153 kilometers per hour, 83 kn range, 1,540 miles, 2,480 kilometers, 1,340 nmi at 237 miles per hour, 206 kn, 381 kilometers per hour, and 25,000 feet, 7,600 meters, with normal fuel and maximum internal bomb load ferry range, 3,700 miles, 6,000 kilometers, 3,200 nmi, service ceiling, 28,000 feet, 8,500 meters, rate of climb, 1,025 feet per minute, 5.21 meters per second, time to altitude, 20,000 feet, 6,100 meters in 25 minutes lift to drag, 12.9 wing loading, 52.5 pounds per square foot, 256 kilograms per square meter, power, mass, 0.0873 horsepower per pound, 0.1435 kilowatts per kilogram, armament guns, 10 times 0 0.50 caliber, 12. 7 mm M2 Browning machine guns in four turrets and two waste positions. Bombs, asterisk asterisk short range, 400 miles, 640 kilometers, 8,000 pounds, 3,600 kilograms. Long range, 800 miles, 1,300 kilometers, 5,000 pounds, 2,300 kilograms. Very long range, 1,200 miles, 1,900 kilometers, 2,700 pounds, 1,200 kilograms. Topic: Accidents and incidents. Topic: Notable B-24 crewmen. Robert Altman, film director, was a B-24 co-pilot, flying over 50 bombing missions in Borneo and the Dutch East Indies. William Charles Anderson, author of Bat-21 and Bomber Crew 369, piloted Liberators based in Italy as a member of the 451st Bomb Group of the 15th AF. Frank Maxwell Andrews, an Army Air Force Lieutenant General was killed on 3 May 1943 in the crash of a B-24 bomber Hot Stuff in Iceland en route to Washington, D.C. Originally buried in Iceland, his remains were removed to Arlington National Cemetery. The former Camp Springs Field is now named in his honor. Chuck Bednarik, NFL Hall of Fame member, former Philadelphia Eagle and the last full-time two-way player, served as a B-24 waste gunner with the 8th Air Force 467th Bomb Group. Bednarik participated in 30 combat missions over Germany as AS, SGT and eventually attained the rank of first lieutenant. Bednarik was awarded the Air Medal and four Oak Leaf Clusters, the European-African Middle Eastern Campaign Medal and four Battle Stars. 
Hal Clement, science fiction author, was a pilot and co-pilot on B-24s and flew 35 combat missions over Europe with the 68th Bomb Squadron, 44th Bomb Group, based in England with 8th Air Force. Ernest K. Gann, early airline pilot and author, flew C-87 cargo express aircraft in southern Asia and China, including flying cargo over the hump. He detailed his flying experiences in Fate as the Hunter. Don Herbert, television pioneer, Mr. Wizard, flew 56 missions as a Liberator pilot over northern Italy, Germany, and Yugoslavia, winning the Distinguished Flying Cross. Joseph P. Kennedy Jr., elder brother of U.S. President John F. Kennedy, was killed in Operation Aphrodite when his PB-4Y1 Liberator, modified to be a remote-controlled bomb, exploded in flight. Ben Kuroki, top turret gunner, was the only Japanese-American in the United States Army Air Forces to serve in combat operations in the Pacific theater of World War II. George McGovern, U.S. Senator and 1972 presidential candidate, served as a B-24 pilot in missions over Italy as a member of the 455th Bomb Group of the 15th Air Force. His wartime exploits and some of the characteristics of the B-24 are the focus of Stephen Ambrose's book Wild Blue. Actor Jimmy Stewart flew B-24s as commanding officer of the 703rd Bomber Squadron, 445th Bombardment Group, out of RAF Tabenum, UK. He was later promoted to operations officer of the 453rd BG. From 1943 to 1944, Stewart was credited with 20 combat missions as a pilot, including one over Berlin. Stewart flew several, possibly as many as 20, additional uncredited missions, filling in for pilots as duties and space would allow. Stewart's leadership qualities were highly regarded. The men who served under him praised his coolness under fire. He entered service as a private in early 1941 and rose to the rank of colonel by 1945. Stuart Udall, author, conservationist, U.S. Representative, and Secretary of Interior, served as a waste gunner on a B-24 in 1944. He was based in southern Italy, 15th Army AF, 454th Bombardment Group. His Liberator's nickname was, Flyin' Home. He is credited with 50 missions. The 454th received a unit citation for leading an attack on the Hermann Göring Steel Works in Linz, Austria on 25 July 1944. Udall's crew suffered one casualty on the mission. The dead crew member was serving at the waste gunner position normally manned by Udall. By chance, the pilot assigned Udall to the nose gun for this mission, saving his life. Jim Wright, former Speaker of the House, served as a B-24 bombardier in the Pacific. He recounts his experience in his book The Flying Circus, Pacific War 1943 as seen through a bombsight. Louis Zamperini, Olympic runner, and later war prisoner and hero, served as a bombardier on two B-24s. The first, Superman, was damaged, and the crew was assigned to B-24D, Green Hornet, to conduct search and rescue. On 27 May 1943, the aircraft crashed into the Pacific Ocean. Eight of the eleven crewmembers were killed. Zamperini, pilot Russell A. Phillips, and Francis McNamara survived the crash. Only Zamperini and Phillips survived their 47 days adrift on a life raft on the sea. Zamperini is the subject of two biographies and the 2014 film Unbroken. Topic. Notable appearances in media The book One Damned Island After Another 1946 contains the official history of the 7th Bomber Command of the 7th Air Force. It describes B-24 operations in the Central Pacific. B-24s from the 7th Air Force were the first B-24s to bomb the Japanese home islands. Authors Cassius Mullen and Betty Byron wrote the story of the first American heavy bomber crew to complete a 25-mission combat tour in the European theater during World War II. The book Before the Bell 2015 tells the story of Captain Robert Shannon and his aircraft, which completed a combat tour only to be lost in an accident while transporting Lieutenant Gen. Frank Maxwell Andrews back to Washington on 3 May 1943. 
Laura Hillenbrand's Unbroken, a World War II story of survival, resilience, and redemption 2010 tells the story of B-24D bombardier Louis Zamperini and how he survived crashing in the Pacific, being adrift on the ocean for 47 days, and then more than two years in Japanese POW camps. Damyanki, a World War II story of tragedy and survival off the west of Ireland by Thomas L. Walsh 2009, tells the story of a U.S. Navy PB-4Y-1 B-24 Liberator submarine patrol bomber that ditched off the west coast of Ireland in 1944. Five of the ten crew survived 33 hours adrift in a seething North Atlantic storm before drifting ashore in Clifton, County Galway, Ireland. The sinking of the Laconia depicts the Laconia incident and a B-20 Fawz attempts to sink the German submarine U-156. Shady Lady, Mission Accomplished, Running on Empty 2012 tells the true story of the USAAS B-24D Shady Lady. It was one of 11 planes that took off from Darwin, Australia, on Friday 13 August 1943, to bomb a Japanese oil refinery at Balakpapan, Borneo, a distance of more than 1,300 miles. This mission was the longest overwater bombing mission up to that time. Topic. See also 1943 Gibraltar B-24 crash H-2X Little Eva aircraft Operation Aphrodite Willow Run Airport related development Consolidated B-32 Dominator Consolidated C-87 Liberator Express Consolidated Liberator I Consolidated R-2Y Consolidated XB-41 Liberator PB-4Y Private Aircraft of Comparable Role, Configuration and Era Avro Lancaster Boeing B-17 Flying Fortress Fock Wolf FW-200 Condor Handley Page Halifax Heinkel He-177 Junkers Ju-290 Petliakov PE-8 Piaggio P. 108 Short Sterling